there is going to be um, an exception for 10% early distribution penalties for those that are needing to take a distribution. Um, there are some qualifying factors though. So if you or uh, a child or somebody that you're caring for tests positive for the COVID-19 um, or your employment status has changed, whether you've been laid off uh, during these difficult times, those factors may come into play about not or being qualifying for that 10 percent um, early distribution qualification. So there are different things. This is very fluid, like we said. So it's changing on a regular basis and a day to day, even maybe even hourly. So it's so important right now to, for us to keep you guys up to date and informational. So this is something we are still learning. It has not been signed, but there is that possibility that if you are needing to take out that distribution of not having that penalty. Now, there are some other factors um, that may come down or change with that, but we are still learning that at this time. So those are some of those things. Now, if you have a qualified plan and you're taking out distributions from that, there is a timeline, whether it be three years that you decide to um, repay that back or three years to take out that distribution and pay those taxes on those three years. So those are some of the things that we have learned right now. Like I said, it's not set in stone at this point, but we are, you know, paying very close attention to what Congress is doing so that we can keep everyone updated at this time. Now, so, Diana, most, you want of, this, to you want most of these things apply only to people who are qualified um, and they have a specific set of circumstances, circumstances, circumstances that will make you be a qualified person, including being diagnosed with or having, uh, I believe it's a child, possibly yes. um, an elder family member who is diagnosed like a parent um, that you have to take care of if you were laid off, um, things like that. But they've kind of left it open ended in that. Um, they've left a way for them to add more ways to be qualified. Um, right, so being the factors are determined by the Secretary um, of Treasury, so that's still, a, it still can change. Right, but there is one thing in there that is available to everybody. You do not have to be a qualified person for that, and that is suspension of 2020 RMDs. So if you must take out an RMD in 2020, if this is passed, you will not have to take that. Now you can still take it, of course. You can always still take it if this is your income. Obviously you're not gonna wanna stop taking it. But if, if you're an RMD and they're making you take out funds that you would rather not take out, um, you don't have to in 2020 if and when this passes and it's close. Yes. Um, there's no mandatory distribution for 2020. And if you just entered RMD in 2019, if you didn't meet the deadline to uh, wait for RMD till you hit 72, um, so if you if you heard about the Secure Act and you went, darn, I missed. Well, now you kind of sort of didn't. Um, right. Basically, if you have an RMD due still for 2019, and you just now became eligible to have to take RMDs, you don't have to take that and you don't have to take 2020. And this applies for everybody, not just qualified people. Um, uh, and you also may have the ability to roll back over if you already took a 2020 distribution and you would rather put it back, um, you have the capability of putting that back as a rollover. Again, this is very, very fluid, but we wanted to give you a heads up so that you knew what was coming down the pike and how it would affect you. Yes. And another thing is that I did want to uh, bring up is something that has been brought up in the past about the um, deadline for April 15th for tax day that has been um, extended. This does mean that traditional and Roth IRA contribution deadline has changed as well. July 15th is when that new tax deadline is. And so with that being said, they have stated that in that you can make contributions to your traditional or Roth IRAs until July 15th.
So that is great. I think that it's amazing for us to be able to have that extra time. Now, as far as your state taxes go, like I said, like we've told you before, make sure you check with your state because every state is going to be different on what they're requiring. I know in the state of Idaho, they are, have changed it to June 15th for extensions for people that have to pay. So everything's changing. It's so important to check with um, the IRS, uh, check their uh, pages, check their websites. Uh, you know, it's so important to stay up to date because everything's always changing right now. So that is something that's very important um, to kind of keep in mind. And remember, if you are in a state that requires a state tax return, you need to check with your state tax commission to find out what changes, if any, they're making to your due date, um, your filing date, when you have to pay. Um, you want to get it from the horse's mouth. So go to your state tax commission website uh, to get the latest and greatest for your particular state. 